Hi, this is Steve Hodgden, Modern Asset Management. It is uh, August 26th, 2020. Um, uh, talking to you from uh, Orange County, California, where the weather is lovely today and we've been, uh, been stepped down in uh, the pandemic uh, ranking uh, enough that we're allowed to go outside and talk to each other as long as we maintain the appropriate distance and uh, and uh, looks like they might even uh, let kids back into school. So, you know, so I don't know. Um, I put uh, I put up a, uh, a screen of uh, something that I uh, can't a, a site that I uh, really enjoy because they do nice graphics on things. It's uh, called Visual Capitalist, and uh, and this is. Uh, this is um, the decline of upward mo mobility in one chart. Um, I have uh, keep coming back more and more to uh, affordable housing, to uh, uh, debt to income ratios uh, below 50% in our lending business and wanting to produce uh, properties or notes where the uh, end user can actually, uh, can actually afford it. Um, so this little chart, let's see, I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Um, so this little chart that we've got up here uh, says, uh, percent of people earning more than their parents. And so I was born right in the middle between 1950 and 1960. I am firmly a boomer. Um, and uh, my parents were born before uh, 1940. So um, in my generation, um, 60, 70, 70% 70 uh, earned less, uh, well, uh, earned more than their parents. Um, we come down here to, uh, to kids uh, older than my kids. And we now get down into, you know, like 35% uh, um, of people are uh, doing better than mom and dad. And, and that, was, uh, that was the goal of my mother is that I did better than uh, her and her, uh, um, uh, her and her, my stepfather who was a cop and worked two jobs constantly to feed six kids. And uh, so, so this again, visual capitalist talks about things we already know, uh, stagnating uh, uh, wage, gro wage growth, um, that drops in a little bit to income distribution. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about uh, trying to study is we have, uh, we've got a couple of thousand small balance uh, unsecured loans. That's our primary work. And um, looking at percentage of income to debt ratios and seeing things like, you know, people making $30,000 a year with $700 truck payments. Um, and uh, I, my winner that I've seen on a credit report is a, uh, is a seven year Dodge Ram, uh, seven year loan for a Dodge Ram that was a $760 uh, monthly payment. Um, there was a time when back before the last uh, crash, when I was driving a you know, $1,000 a month leased Mercedes, but uh, that was stupid then, it's stupid now. Um, so uh, this little chart, which maybe I'll, make a little bigger, um, looked at uh, income distribution and that uh, we're talking about this vanishing middle class. Um, well, it seems to me that according to this uh, data source that low income is still about the same 11, 13% of uh, the population. Uh, lower middle class has uh, shrunk since the 60s but it has been replaced by this upper middle class making over making over $100,000. So we've had a drop off from the middle class of 50 to 100,000 and now it's now spread out more. Um, I, uh, I'm keenly, uh, well, in our little team here, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm chicken little about what's going on right now. I, I, I see uh, dire things because, I got my butt kicked in 2008, 
So I'm uh, looking at those borrowers that were uh, that are uh, upper middle class um, uh, wage earners, and they've all been sent home. Um, and does that uh, does that maintain? Um, I went through this back at the uh, creation of uh, computing, um, where credit managers was a uh, was a big job. Being a credit manager used to be a used to be a well paid uh, professional uh, career, and uh, you were quickly outsourced by uh, replaced by computers and algorithms and and our blessed uh, Fair Isaac's uh, credit score. Um, and those were all uh, folks that have gone away. How many uh, how many bank branch managers are going to go away now? Because well, you know, do we go into the bank anymore, right? So anyway, but uh, for those of you that have never seen it, um, I really enjoy Visual Capitalist. Um, you know, there's no cost for any of their stuff, but it's uh, but it's you know, something that I find interesting. Um, so I'm gonna stop that share. Come back and say hi. Oh, hey, Jim's here. I haven't seen Jim in a long time. How are you? Um, and hey, John. It's you and a couple of names. I know Keith, but I don't know Bev and Chi, so uh, so welcome. Um, we're, uh, uh, we uh, don't attract a large following because I'm not selling anything. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm just one of the gang. Um, so I'm gonna share a couple of things that are going on and see if we can uh, maybe generate some discussion at the end. Um, looking for my Excel. Let me go find it. So let's see. Let's see. Share screen. There we go. As rudimentary as we can get. So, um, a couple of you who have been on this call before know that Dion DePauli joins me uh, from time to time, and we typically talk about notes. Uh, and workouts and how to read tapes and how to you know how to do all that stuff um, in this instance oh, I got a chat coming in um, and Bev asked what yes the website is visualcapitalist.com and it goes in lots of different directions it's uh, um, I don't I haven't seen anything that makes me think that they've got a political bent um, but uh, but it has it has also inspired me to hire uh, a financial analyst for a business that uses a program called Tableau, and that lets us turn uh, all of our static uh, spreadsheets uh, into dynamic, moving, three-dimensional charts. Uh, so we're I'm having a grand time doing that. Um, so anyway, so. Um, Dion, a uh, good friend and somebody who's helped me for the last four years in the note business, um, has uh, gone back, he went back a couple of years ago, he went back to commercial real estate. Um, he has a uh, seller who has 37 rentals in Gary, primarily Section 8, and they're working through a sale where they're looking to take out a first position blanket uh, mortgage across all 37 and replace it with uh, new investor money. Um, so because we talk about uh, yield and making, uh, making money uh, through, uh, through uh, mortgage payments, I thought it would be worth, to, worth just to go through what the deal structure is. Um, just to, I'm not soliciting anybody to come and buy this. I just said this is this is an example of uh, the things that I see, and I talk about what I like and don't like about it. Um, so this is uh, 37, 37 uh, uh, older homes in Gary, Indiana, that are rented out to the county and the fair for the government through the Section 8 program, and are generally that's what they are. Uh, so I've put down here, uh, sale price of the, of the portfolio is 1.5, 37 units, that's $41,000 a door. Uh, so the houses are between 35 and 55,000, they're uh, spread around. Per unit rents are 700 to uh, just short of $1,000. 
um, and again, payments guaranteed, um, such as guaranteed payments are. You know, there's there's some stuff, there's some vacancy, there's some some of the usual kinds of things. So the uh, the buyer is bringing six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash, and looking to acquire this nine hundred thousand dollar mortgage, which the holder uh, doesn't want to continue. He wants to get cashed out. Um, it's a 10% note. It's been interest only for the last, uh, I don't know, five years. Um, just guessing. I know it's been around for a little while. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a 58% loan to value. This one and a half million dollar number was generated through uh, an, what's called an AVM, an automated value model, which is uh, one step less uh, human contact than a broker price opinion. Um, it's a, it's a guess. It's a, it's not a, it's not a Zillow's estimate, but it's a, it's an electronic number, and it's you know it's what it is. But spread across thirty seven units, uh, you know, I'm I'm okay with that. So, what they were what they were looking to do. The notes now ten percent interest, nine hundred thousand pay $7,500 a month, and they were looking to turn this into a, uh, um, into a participation uh, uh, loan and split it up among a group of different, uh, among a group of different investors. So nine investors with $100,000 each, something like that. Um, I'm in a number of uh, deals like this where I own a share in a REIT or a share in an LLC, or I own half of a mortgage, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, so that's okay. Um, so you'd have a first position lien against 37 uh, properties um, with the expectation that you would get taken out in some amount of time, a year, three years, maybe longer, maybe lesser, um, as, the, uh, as the new owner stabilized um, uh, and proved stabilized, had a track record, and proved that he would qualify for a portfolio loan from uh, from one of the lenders that are not lending today. Um, a lot of the uh, um, sources of commercial money have dried up, given what's going on in the world today. Um, in fact, uh, people have found me to ask me if I can loan on their portfolios and you now I'm I'm a little tiny business in Orange County and you know how the, how people found me to say will you buy my stuff is uh, you know is anybody's guess but anyway um, the property net the properties combined net cash flow $160,000 a year um, that works out to be on a monthly the monthly remit of that is thirteen thousand after all expenses property management repairs taxes uh, vacancy all that that's what it's been uh, it's been that first a couple of years uh, so that means that each door uh, on average makes three hundred and sixty dollars a month out of its eight hundred dollars a month rent so the owner would be borrowing money and paying out 7,500 or 7,800 if you were going to amortize a 30-year note, uh, and they would have $5,500 for reserves and to make a little bit of money, um, and so they would have a $66,000 return against their $650,000 uh, cash in, so their yield is 10%. Um, I don't know where everybody's from, but those of us from California, um, if we can get a piece of piece of real estate to break even, we're thrilled. Um, and the play here, uh, particularly here in Orange County, has never been about uh, cash flow. It's always been about appreciation. Um, again, since I'm being chicken little of late, I think we're you know heading for a bit of a downturn. And once I said that, the market went crazy, right? So uh, homes are selling in minutes, not days down here. Um, so the uh, the expectation uh, when I talked to Dion about it I said of course I never I never like uh, um, interest only I always like some kind of amortization so I'd be lobbying for the seventy eight hundred dollars um, I hate thirty year term papers paper I'm sixty four years old I am not going to be there when it's paid off um, thirty year paper is tough to sell. So we went to the usual standard formula, 
which is uh, 10 years and 10%. And I said, well, that's something I could probably, probably live with. Um, and so you've got a balloon um, then in 10 years. Uh, but again, much, much more likely that you get taken out once, he, once the new owner can uh, get a portfolio loan. And again, I am not selling this. I'm just talking about it as an example. Um, so um, you put in another tab here. It's got a beautiful loan schedule. We just pulled that off of Microsoft. Um, but uh, but that's, that's that. So people come on to this call looking to uh, find ways to uh, make some cash flow. And, and here's a way you can do it, spread across a bunch of, uh, bunch of accounts. And then, then you've got a way in, you know, how do you feel about Gary? How do you feel about the Midwest? How do you feel about uh, homes built from 1920 to 1960? Because that's all, that's all that was built there. It was all built uh, in, the, uh, in the industrialization. You know, uh, that town's run by, uh, was built by a Goodyear rubber plant or Firestone rubber plant. Uh, so, so that was that. So, the, uh, so there are deals. Um, uh, every deal has its own nuance. So that's an example of, of, of one. Um, what was the other thing I was going to show you? Oh, oh, okay. This is going to take a minute for me to find this page. Um, I uh, try to tell you, this is going to be a little bumpy. Uh, I try to tell you what I'm, what I'm up to. Um, let me share the screen. All right. You should have seen that I switched to a page called the Scambia County Tax Deed. Um, if I have not, if I'm, if you're not seeing the screen, somebody please uh, send me a chat. I'll wait, take a sip of my uh, decaf coffee. And we'll come back and start. So um, I look for distress in various ways. Um, last thing I look for distress is, is in distressed physical uh, 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 houses, you know, houses that are just beat, beat to tears and need to be rebuilt and all that. That's just not, that's not me. I look for, I look primarily for financial distress and where I can help somebody get out of a situation and, uh, um, and make, you know, and make every, make everything win, make a win for everybody. But as we've been um, seeing, uh, seeing prices tighten and less wholesale opportunities, I drifted back to uh, tax deeds. And um, so I wanted to just look at an example of a tax deed and why we, why in the world I would go back and do this because now we're getting it now we're getting into work um, and I've already got a full time job uh, so this is so Escambia County is Pensacola Florida um, and I've done eight projects uh, with a company called Sunrise Acquisition Services there over the last uh, now coming up on four years uh, we've done some rehabs uh, that have gone um, that we bought, re bought, repaired, rented, and then uh, sold on seller finance to uh, to the occupants. Um, we've uh, done four ground up uh, houses and sold them directly. Um, I had them. Those projects took the fastest was four months. The longest was a year and a half. Um, that we were sitting building a. Uh, a Six hundred thousand dollar house on the water in uh, in in Gulf Breeze, um, and that was uh, that wasn't the fault of the market, that was the fault of uh, of uh, a struggle with the builder. Um, it came out came out fine, sold, made you know I made a little bit of money, but it was just it just took twice as long as uh, that should have taken. If I want to do something that take twice as long, I'll stay here in California. Um, where I can go and frustrate myself every day and go to the job site. Um, I did two of those in the last three years, and uh, I, I'll say now, since so it's on record, never again, which means I'm probably going to run off to LA and uh, uh, build an ADU in a, uh, in a uh, 
I don't know, I don't know rental backyard. But anyway, um, this is um, an $18,000 tax deed that I put a $20,000 bid on. Um, it is, uh, it has an assessed value of $173,000. Um, it is highly unlikely that this property will roll all the way through the tax deed process and I'll win it for $20,000, but I might because the property has some problems. Um, so, so I'm going to change screens. I go here. So people should be seeing a Google map of this address. Um, if you cannot, again, please somebody jump and raise your hand. Um, so this is, uh, this is on Gulf Beach Highway. Um, I know where this is. And it's this, it's this forest right here. And why in the world would you want to do that? And the problem with this piece of property on why it hasn't sold is that about a third of it is in, uh, in a flood zone. Uh, what's going on in Pensacola today? Pensacola tonight and tomorrow is being hit by the eastern edge of a Category 4 hurricane. It'll see winds of 70 miles an hour. It'll get a foot, foot and a half of rain in probably a 48-hour period. Um, it's uh, something that happens every year there. So the back with the top part of the screen up here is going to uh, is is all water you see down here there's this piece here and you've got to have these ponds to uh, these detention ponds like this to uh, take the water off the property to make things buildable so what do i like about this lot look i've got a subdivision right here they put in a little lake that takes up the runoff water and everybody's happy this does a couple things for me it says there's no argument with the county if I want to do something similar 100 yards away, and it tells me that it can be done. Um, clearing trees is mighty expensive until we learned that you can sell them to the paper mill. Um, so, so we were like, after doing this a couple of times, we were, oh, duh. Uh, so you arrange for uh, your land to be cleared. You make it. You get. You don't get to break it. You don't get to zero on that, but you get. Uh, you get closer. Um, this property has is on this on this dog track road here, and it's this little. It's a we call it a flag lot. It's this strip here that then goes this way. So I've got come into the comp, come into the neighborhood here, go out of the neighborhood here, and you've got you've got some traffic flow. Um, I've got this lot up here that maybe potentially is something to build too if you wanted to do something more than uh, looks like 40 houses that are uh, stacked up here. Um, uh, zoom in. And given the shapes of the roofs, this is newer build, um, probably in the 80s or 90s. And so I know that there's, uh, there's going to be some, diff some decent uh, infrastructure. I'm not going to have to uh, um, reinvent uh, you know, I'm not going to have trouble getting trouble getting water and power um, does that mean that I want to take it build uh, and spend the next four years building houses no probably not um, although the folks at sunrise would certainly love me to uh, finance these a project like that but uh, our intent if we've won this is which I'm probably going to have to raise the bid um, is to uh, get a plat map drawn, uh, get it approved and to be built into a subdivision and then sell it on terms to a builder. Um, I don't have to get much back uh, in order to get this thing in the, in the, uh, in the black. Um, I'm in contract right now for five acres uh, up in the north end of Pensacola four and a half acres in the north end of Pensacola that has a similar kind of thing. There's a development of 15 houses, uh, um, eighth of a mile away. There's no way that they're gonna argue about putting in another development with uh, 20 houses. And sin since that project would absolutely be an affordable housing project, uh, there's, uh, there'll be uh, 
fast tracking of uh, of, uh, of paperwork there to get us open. Um, this just briefly uh, to show you the uh, that it's show you the shape of the flag lot. So it's this strip here, back here. This is easement. What it doesn't show is that all this on the upside of it. This is this is water. You see how the project behind. Hopefully people can see this. You can see how the project behind has this little carve out. Well, you've got you've got the makings of a good lake up here uh, between these two properties. And that water, as you roll the map, you'll see that that water, there's spots of water that show up, you know, basically all the way back to the bay. Um, you see uh, the property tax appraiser's record gives you an idea of uh, what happened. Um, this property traded uh, uh, in a civil judgment, uh, just the named $100 in 2012 and 2020. Uh, there was a quit claim deed of $100 as the property was moved around uh, inside, of a, inside of a family. There's a 1991 transaction, the same thing. Um, go up into the owners and I see two people, uh, half interests and you know, somebody died, likely. Um, somebody forgot that they owned this because it was only $100 back in 1991. Um, <laughs> there are excess abandoned pieces of property uh, that have imperfections, um, many not buildable at all, um, that still have some residual value. And I play these, I used to play these and I'm going to play them again, kind of like, uh, like options. Um, oh, I can close this window. Um, like options. Um, it's a, a it's playing blackjack. You know, I'm gonna gonna play 20 hands. I'm gonna win, gonna win 10. Five are gonna break even. I'm gonna have you know, there'll be a little of this and that. But uh, um, it's it's uh, I'm looking for I'm looking for capital gains income. I'm looking for um, big value add possibilities. Um, I know how to know how to process paperwork. I know how to hire civil engineers. Um, and uh, and so we're we're doing some some of that. I'm not uh, I'm not shopping uh, third party uh, notes on tapes anymore. Um, but uh, I'll stop that share. We can probably talk about that. And we get a little Q and A. Um, I think I had one more thing to show. So I take a deep breath. Um, so let's see. So we talked about uh, talked about a nine hundred thousand dollar note that you could buy a partial lot. Um, talked about uh, land development in uh, right now one of the wettest parts of the country. Um, so that tells you why things are in, things are um, uh, uh, what they are um, there. Um, just uh, something I was working on just a little bit earlier, about an hour ago, that I left up to share. Um, I belong to a, a group called Land Academy. And uh, they give you a bunch of tools for your monthly uh, uh, for your monthly uh, contribution, and one of them is uh, uh, access to um, Title Pro twenty four seven. Um, so, if those of you that are uh, needing title reports, I've been happy with Title Pro. Um, they're uh, they're pretty darn close to going down to your local. Uh, 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 escrow officer and uh, sweet talking them into pulling some reports for you. Um, I try not to do that. In fact, I don't do that with uh, with people that I'm uh, doing business with. I don't want to. I don't want to be an extra burden. You know, I but uh, I have gone to. I have gone to uh, my folks in Pensacola and asked for ask for ask for some lists, and they've been helpful to do that. Um, but it's a title report, just like anything else. And this is the uh, this is the four and a half acres that uh, we've got under contract now, and this was simply to make sure that uh, that there was nothing there was nothing out there that I was going to be inheriting, um, and it's clean. It's been owned for a while. Uh, been owned since 2019. They paid fifty one thousand for it. Uh, I've got it uh, under contract at fifty two thousand five hundred. You know, so they bought it with the intent to develop. 
and decided that they didn't want to. It's a not a super in demand, not an in demand part of the world at all. Um, but again, I like uh, I like making rentals, and so this would probably be something that will cut up uh, sell pieces and build some entry level rental stock uh, on. You can uh, you can build a house in Florida for call it a third less a building in California, and you can do it in one third or one sixth the time. Um, so, but anyway, uh, Title Pro twenty four seven is a service that I've been been happy with, um, and so that's uh, that was the technical giveaway for the day. It's easy to open an account; they just charge you they charge you per transaction. So. Um, just don't buy all the, uh, they give you all these options. You don't need all the options. You just need the title report. You don't need the comps and the foreclosures, unless you do. But uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, that's my half hour. Um, did any of those things or anything about uh, about notes or uh, 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 rentals or the economy that anybody wants to chime in with? Steve, can you uh, talk a little bit about your diligence process on the on the land? Uh, how, how are you going about that? Yeah. Um, so the you can't you can't put eyes on everything, um, especially since you don't win um, all the bids. M many of these things get redeemed. Um, so we um, I bid I bid a lot just with. Uh, uh, Google, Google Earth, and uh, my computer, uh, looking for looking for other trouble. So if I'm buying a, if I'm buying a foreclosure, I want to make sure that you know I'm buying I'm buying the first, or if I'm if I'm buying the second, that it's the first is you know not something that's toxic. Um, I can do that on paper. Um, I'm using I'm using the standard you know the standard you know that uh, the gurus are you know tell you you know buy things at 65 or 70 percent of uh, retail value so i we've been using you know just a you know is it half price um and uh, um the cantonment uh, lot um <clears throat> is was fifty two thousand um and uh, with no no commissions and it was uh, came to us came to us because they 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 put up a post on um, I don't think Craigslist but another local website and I have a an investor agent uh, friend there uh, who says I want you to look at this um, they got excited enough that they drove out and stood on the dirt um, there was once you're there there's nothing to see that you couldn't have seen with uh, with Google Earth, um, I know, I know cantonment, and frankly, I don't like it. It's like the worst part of Pensacola for me. Um, but it uh, it fits the this property would would hold twenty modular homes, not mobile homes, but twenty uh, modular homes or uh, SIPs construction, you know, entry level twelve hundred square foot uh, properties, uh, uh, just fine. It, uh, selling houses that. You know, one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars on terms to people that don't credit qualify. Um, it's in a district. It's in a. You know, get really esoteric. It's in a district that allows uh, uh, USDA financing. There's farmland out there, and USDA is just a fan, just a marvelous uh, uh, owner occupant program. So I would think we'd be helping people get qualified for USDA loans. You know, maybe they would start rent to own. But um, yeah, it's it's Google flyover uh, uh, checking the county GIS maps. Um, just lots and lots of lots and lots of time with the uh, with a thirty inch monitor. Uh, so <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you checking with the the city at all? I know you you said you kind of assumed that because the the it's so close to the other subdivision there. But is there any chance of you know something might pop up that yeah. will eliminate? So, so in this case, in, in that case, it's county. Uh, so I don't have that. Um, I know the land is clear. Uh, there's nothing on the land. It's just trees. Um, the I have I have a bid in uh, on a, on a house in Gulf Breeze 
that when you look at the pictures, you go, oh, I know for sure there's going to be some uh, there's going to be some city activity here. Um, it was it was a it was a newer Google uh, Google Drive by picture, and there was you know, there was there was garbage on the roof. Okay. <laughs> You know, so they they ran out of they ran out of stuff uh, room in the driveway in the front yard and they put some stuff on the roof. Um, there was like a oh uh, it was a water heater, uh, so it's like on uh, was on top of the carport laying there and so you you just you just know that there's uh, uh, there's fines sitting on that property, you know and uh, and we put it I put in a placeholder bid and we will go absolutely we'll go check, you know and. Uh, and I use I put I put small bids in mostly as I run through and identify what I like, and then my boots on the ground will uh, run through like I'll pick ten that are coming up in September, and then the Sunrise folks will run through and and they do the same thing I do sitting in front of the TV at night scrolling through uh, uh, pictures of properties, and they'll winnow it down the ten down to five. And then we'll up the bids on those five. They'll go out and look at them, and uh, um, and some things, some and lots of them. When they you know, be like, nope, wrong side of the tracks. Nope, you don't want to be near there. Um, but like this, this lot, there's 22 acres. Um, I understand why people wouldn't bid on it because it's got you know eight or ten acres of water on it. Um, but you know, I'll take 10 acres at two at two thousand dollars an acre. That that makes sense. So. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Where do you find the different um, assessor, county assessor sites? Or do you look in different areas or how do it's, you go about that? I've been, so five years ago, um, I weathered the storm and wound up selling up. Uh, I had all my, all my eggs in one basket. I owned a shopping center in uh, Denver. And when I got out of that, I knee jerked and went the other way and wound up owning 33 notes in 12 states. Um, what that taught me is don't ever do that again. Um, so I knew, I knew a couple of folks in Pensacola and, and, and so I decided, okay, let me center in and do this just in one place so I get to know the rules. Um, if you're going to look for tax deeds and foreclosures, um, there's lots of different companies um, that are doing these. Um, take a look at um, a website called realforeclosure.com or realtaxdeed.com, and you create a free account there and they're primarily they're in i think six or seven states um they've got i think almost all of florida um they've got um and some stuff in Ohio and uh up in the midwest and i think colorado um where they handle foreclosures for counties um but uh, auction.com of course um is a great source um the the Current uh, government rules and all the stuff that's going on with uh, um, with with the economy and COVID and all that um, auction volume is greatly reduced or completely uh, evaporated, um, except for commercial. And so, in this last month, I've been um, playing in this, looking for commercial, looking for looking for commercial lots that are likely not going to. Um, not going, not going to. Uh, they'd have a problem. They've got something wrong with them. Um, the cantonment one is uh, it's way out there, um, but there's uh, there's city services uh, not very far. Um, um, it's uh, the drawback there is it would have to be on septic. Um, I've done enough septic now that I'm not afraid of it anymore, um, especially new septic. The uh, the the 22 acre lot is, uh, it's got the water problem. It's uh, behind some light industrial, it's behind uh, uh, some manufacturing warehousing stuff and a car lot. So it's not in a, uh, it's not in a pretty uh, neighborhood. And again, it's, it, that's just after, after seeing pictures on the ground in the rain, um, it just, I, I just saw, you know, senior housing. And so 
I don't know if that's what it turns into, but it seemed like a logical thing. So. so I think that was the question and then a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Okay. I was also wondering, have you ever done just uh, auctions, like bidding at auctions? Yeah, yeah. Um, Orange County here, where I'm sitting right now, uh, they do them live in person. And um, they're weird. Um, the, it is a game that's now completely dominated by, uh, by hedge funds, uh, by Blackstone, um, that uh, they, they, they'll send a guy out there or a woman out there with um, uh, full price, I mean, full price. Uh, so the, the, the house will be a $600,000 auction start price uh, with an $800,000 street value. They'll pay $801,000. Um, so that leaves all the little investors out. Um, so, and so again, you've got to look for, you've got to look for what kind of damage, what kind of distress fits your ability. You know, so, um, you know, and is it, and is it worth it? Um, there's uh, um, more and more states, well, in Florida also does tax lien sales. So you can buy, you can buy tax paper. Um, and again, dominated by, uh, by the hedge funds. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's okay. You're buying, you're buying tax paper that's gonna pay you 5%. Um, I look to buy those when there's somebody, somebody behind. Um, so if I buy a 2018 uh, tax certificate that I want, I want the 2016 uh, tax certificate to already be owned by somebody because that's been turned into a tax deed. And when they uh, turn that property over, when they sell that property, they're going to have to pay the 2017 and 18 out of that closing. So you, you get paid and, um, some places, there's all kinds of study on it. I'm not, nowhere near an expert, but those those um, those tax deeds will carry between five and eighteen percent interest. So you know, again, you gotta, you know, again, you're playing options. You're you know, you're playing. I I liken it to black to blackjack. So. Hey, Steve. Uh, hi. Hi, Jim. Um. In the uh, meetup thing on here, I uh, mentioned the word risk. And uh, so I, I've been looking for something in the past five or 10 years that I've been going to real estate group meetings. Everybody talks about risk, but nobody goes in, into it. And uh, I, I know when you get a PPM, uh, there's a paragraph in there that says, these are all your risks. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I never hear anybody kind of going into how do you assess risk on different types of investments. Right. Well, then not certainly not being an expert about that. But I, <laughs> I, I, as you know, Jim, you know me a little bit, so you know I've got some horror stories. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... In December 2006, I signed a, a contract to buy a shopping center, one of the, the C-class uh, uh, 44,000 square foot shopping center for $4.2 million. Um, I 1031 the uh, property in Northern California into it and signed a note for $2.7 million or something, right? you know, some ungodly amount of money. Um, the uh, the commercial real estate invest uh, broker who presented that property to me gave me a ten year pro forma that showed me that I was going to make fifteen thousand dollars a month until I was old, until I was the age I am now. Um, I said okay. <laughs> Um, I put uh, nine hundred thousand dollars into uh, clean, cleaning up uh, that property and bringing it from a C to a B neighborhood. Um, and that was, I started in December, 2006 and March of 2000. So I paid, so now I'm into this property for $5 million. Uh, and March of 2008, I was 80% vacant and the property was worth two and a half million dollars. Right. Um, we didn't account for the end of the fantastic run up in property values that was going to happen and that was going to continue to happen forever. 
right? I was one of the classic California money, chasing cap rates, went to Colorado, not understanding the boom and bust cycle of Colorado. Um, I believed that the path of progress was coming up highway I-70, up Kipling, Kipling Street, right to my door. I was two blocks off of, I was two blocks north of I-70. Project, the, what happened was the path of progress stopped south of Highway I-70. I was two blocks short of being right in the middle of everything being uh, renewed. Um, so 10 years later, nine, year, nine years later, when I sold that property, progress finally crossed the freeway and a grocery store opened up next to me and I was able to exit that property with a million dollar profit. But in that meantime, I had to, instead of making $15,000 a month, I had to feed that property $100,000 a year. So it took, it took literally down to every penny I had to hang on and make those payments all that time. So, so, that's, so there's the risk. Wh whoever's selling, <laughs> you know, that's, why I do this, that's, why I, that's why I do this hour. You know, that's why I do this hour once a month. Um, Risks, um, risk is for me these days is all about partner risk, and I've I've had enough good and bad experiences that I can uh, that I can you know I can tell if a project's you know probably going to be okay. Um, so, <laughs> but to that, um, I just settled on a foreclosure uh, on a spec build in. Um, and a place called Sunset Plaza, which is just above, uh, uh, what's the street in Beverly Hills? But anyway, just above, just, just as you go into Beverly Hills, um, Rodeo Drive, above Rodeo Drive. And it's one of these mir engineering miracles and you know, uh, an $8 million house built on a vertical postage stamp of a lot. Um, and there was a three and a half million dollar first and then a group of investors that were in the in the construction loan, and then there was a group of investors that were in the uh, uh, in, a, in in there for second, and um, I was in there in a third position. And um, so what I had to do when the builder when the developer stopped paying the builder and the project stopped last November uh, in February, I filed uh, I filed foreclosure, and just June. Well, we have things got delayed because of uh, the COVID thing, but um, uh, in June, the end of June, um, I settled for uh, for my principal uh, because I knew that's what it was going to take to uh, make this deal go. Make this deal go. Uh, he could get me. He could. He got me one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He owed me. Uh, he owed me three hundred if he counted all the interest and late fees and all that. Um, but I knew that. I, I knew that it was, you know, it was bird in the hand was the right thing. I had had another bad dealing with this guy and I, and I wanted out. I had two deals, two deals sequentially going on and I had to foreclose in both of them. What was the, what was the problem there was um, the builder, um, the developer, not the builder, the developer uh, didn't have enough skin in the game. I had very little. Uh, he was a, a great talker. He was promoted by somebody that was a regular uh, presenter on the LA Orange County uh, uh, RIA meeting circuit. So he was presented by somebody who was um, uh, respected enough and had been around the community long enough that uh, he had some, uh, had some credibility. Um, when I tore that deal apart, I found that they were getting 10 points for putting, them, for putting the money together for him to buy these properties. So it was a bad businessman who built a marvelous product, just built beautiful, beautiful property. Um, uh, 1200 Linda Flora in Los Angeles was the, uh, was the first one. Um, pictures of that are still on Zillow. It's I, I, prettiest place I've ever been in. Um, and so that's the uh, that's the the partner. It's what's the risk if everything falls apart, Jim? Right, right. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you you buy a fifty thousand dollar note. You think you know your max your max uh, 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 
potential downside is, oh, you know, maybe 10 grand because I'm going to have to discount it and sell it cheap and foreclose. Um, you know, Security National has eaten me alive on servicing fees on a couple of bankruptcy filings um, that have just been protracted and lots of appearances and just on and on and on as we try to, uh, as we try to get our property um, taken out of a bankruptcy. Um, the uh, there's you know special protections for people in uh, in Rust Belt states. Um, you know the county the 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 governments there don't want you know uh, nef bad bill collector types like me coming and taking people's homes, right? You know because because I don't I don't vote them in or out of office. they are uh, people that live there do. Um, I've got a. Uh, I've got a mobile home investment that I put a little money in, a little park investment, um, because I thought the partner overseeing the project was Jefferson Lilly out of San Francisco. And I thought, again, that gave it some credibility. Well, as it turns out, in, in that case, it's just, you know, it's just limping along. It's going to be okay. I mean, it's just, but it's not producing the, you know, the magic 10% yield, you know, things and, or, you know, 17% or whatever. Um, I am no longer in love with returns. Um, if I, you know, if I, you know, every now and then a home run happens, that may not have anything to do with me. I mean, it's just maybe just, you know, being in the right place at the right time. Um, a little smaller transactions or flexible more trans more flexible transactions um, the foreclosure that we did on um, the Linda Flora property the equity investor group so the people that had that had the, the the down payment money and the you know, had the one point two million dollars into the deal so they're in second position and they as a group, couldn't come to pull the uh, pull the trigger to uh, foreclose. They still believed in the in the borrower and the project, and they believed again what the promoter was telling them. Right? Um, we had given them a small third uh, because you know I smelled a rat, so I lent them a little more money on my own. Um, so that I could, you know, I spent some money in order to be able to jump ahead of the first and the second, and that, you know, that proved effective. But that's, you know, that's a, you know, that's a weird bet, and that's, you know, that's for guys like me that have been, you know, chasing people in court for, well, now f <sighs> coming up on my 40th year in collections. Uh, so, so the. Uh, um, we can't trust people. We shouldn't. What? What is it? We shouldn't buy anything from somebody who's teaching a course. I think that's probably one thing. You know. Exactly. You know. May, may, maybe. Maybe that's it. You know. We've those of us that have been around the note business. I mean, I. I cried bullshit on Scott Carson to his face. Um, you know, and it just was. You know, it just. The whole premise of buying that. Well, uh, here we go. Buying second mortgages because I can call the borrower and do a workout. Right? Um, I've owned collection agencies for 20 years, handled literally millions of accounts through all kinds of processes, had a couple of attorneys and a team of paralegals that worked for me for, you know, I did this for 20 years. That's what I did. Um, you're going to go buy an account after I've done everything I've can because you're a nice person and the borrower is going to pay you, you know, you know, you know, uh, one out of five, um, one out of five. Um, the, the unsecured, the secured note pool that I bought that still is performing. Um, I bought 26 notes from a hedge fund but I knew exactly what it was that they were doing, and I knew what their work was, and I knew where their, I knew where they did, I knew where, I knew where they stopped. So what I bought from them were five-year seasoned loan mods that were deep in the money now that all had, that well, when I bought them, they had about 50% uh, uh, equity, and now they've all got you know, 60 plus percent equity. Um, and still, some of those people defaulted because they're debtors, and their lives lives just you know things change. Um, and you know, I don't have any. The only magic you have is a in in this situation is lower the monthly payment, 
and mm -hmm. goodbye, goodbye yield, right? You know, so so I've got a I've got a note in North Carolina. Borrower owes me twenty three thousand. My basis is thirteen, and he's delinquent. And you know, he sends in three fifty a month, and you know, uh, eight out of twelve. Um, I said, if you can go get fifteen thousand dollars, you can have you can buy me out. Right? I'll give you an eight thousand dollar discount on your note. And I think he understood what I was telling him, but he didn't have fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> so, so we weren't going to get anywhere. You know, so you know, so I offered rather than sell the note at the discount, I figured I'd sell it to him. You know, and so what am I doing? I'm limping along at you know, uh, break even. You know, for now, because I know the property is worth you know thirty. You know, but I don't want it. I I don't want a rural. Oh, there you go. I don't want any rural property anymore. I want to be. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to know how far Walmart is. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, so that's uh, so that's that's that. That's so a perfect. Yeah. Uh huh. That's a perfect segue for my question, which is, um, uh, I had been thinking where I wanted 1031 next would be in a city like Kansas City or Indianapolis, but now it seems like what is uh, you know, with Manhattan only being 30 percent occupied or whatever it is, and the city's emptying out, rates going down, and in San Francisco, Tahoe is like 10 offers for every house, cash, 100,000 over the asking price. New Hampshire's like gone up $100,000 this summer. I'm starting to think rural is the new direction. I mean, people are gonna have messages with COVID that, you know, why be in cities? What do you, what do you see? Well, you think there's, there's uh, so it's depend if investing versus working. And you know, like I said, I do this. I'm, you know, I'm a fairly inactive member in this land academy community, and and prepper, you know, preppers have always been around. Now, being a prepper is really in fashion. Um, you know, give me some place to park my park my mobile home, and I'm going to ride out the uh, end of days. Um, my daughter lives in Brooklyn, and she just renewed her lease at a uh, at a ten percent. Uh, uh, Adjustment. So, New York oh. isn't New York isn't completely empty. Um, Manhattan is. Fifth Avenue is dead, and who knows when that's going to come back. The office towers are empty, but she's a uh, she teach she's a uh, she teaches uh, uh, writing, and she has a uh, there's no there's no professor gigs for her to get. But she's doing ad hoc. Uh, she's got a little writing uh, online thing called Brooklyn Young Writers, and she tutors uh, motivated high school kids on creative writing. Uh, she's uh, uh, working um, part time for Columbia University, helping uh, graduate students clean up their uh, clean up their papers. You know, get their you know get their English and grammar and things better for you know mostly tech people trying to you know get their PhDs that kind of stuff. Um, but there's no there there is no in classroom her and twenty kids learn in English. You know that's just you know that that that's gone. Um, well, that that's another thing that's going to be a wild card in choosing location. We've always said it's all about the jobs, what companies are relocating there, and now everybody I know who's working in an office says I can live anywhere now because I don't have to go to the office anymore. Yeah, I'm 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 in my office right now. Um, there's three of us in this space. We're all sitting 15 feet apart and, and it's kind of like, we're here because we need some humanity from time to time, but I work remotely, uh, two thirds of the time, 20 days a month. I'm, uh, I'm working out of a bedroom in the house. Um, I can't, I, I'm getting desperately, uh, in need of human contact. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, so you know, I, I understand the Gary Northwest Indiana marketplace. Um, you've uh, I'm looking at doing some things, some development stuff, and again in the suburbs there, um, not in not in the blighted uh, not not in the blighted section. Uh, um, oh, John wants to know where my 
daughter is in Brooklyn. Uh, she's near uh, she's near Prospect Park um, and Atlantic Avenue. Um, she's uh, but, uh, um, you know, so I'm not I'm not interested in building houses in Gary, but I'm interested in turning farmland into bedroom communities. I'm interested in housing. If we went back to the picture that I had up in the beginning. I'm interested in putting up housing for the fifty to hundred thousand dollar income earner. Um, I'm I, that that I think I don't think that that uh, income point isn't going to go away. Um, what I think where the damage is going to be is it's going to be uh, middle level management. Um, it's going to be, uh, you know, maybe we don't need quite so many uh, coders as we have now. Maybe we're not, maybe I, no, I, I don't know. Um, but certainly restaurant owners are just destroyed. Um, I look at, uh, I have a subprime, I have a subprime pool, which is uh, the, the core of what we do. Uh, we finance uh, uh, elective medical procedures. And and the driver the drivers there are income and debt to income ratio. I don't I don't need to know your credit score if I know how much money you have in the bank. And I I can tell you, lots of people don't have two hundred dollars in the bank. Lots and lots of people. So yeah. So so I'm still wondering what happens when this. Uh, you know, we're done with the sub. We're done with the six hundred dollar a week subsidy. Um, you know, I, I don't know. So. Yeah, that's what makes me nervous about like investing in apartment buildings, yeah, for instance. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. right. So it's so you know. So rather than have a closely compacted uh, C grade or B grade um, apartment building, although I've I've got money in some of those, and I just put some just put a little bit of money into another one in Tucson, um, because the management business the people running it are so much better than anything i could do um but uh the um the um so the catonement lot um four and a half acres buildable acres divided into uh 15 parcels uh, um, and then put it out for sale in pieces um, and I've got people there that are happy to start building houses and, you know, so, you know, maybe, maybe you put in a hundred thousand and you put up a model, um, and, and see what happens, you know, and then, you know, let's say if you put one in and say, you know, here, come get your lots, but, but builders, you know, this is, this is, you know, that there's a roulette wheel component of this, you know, I could, I could wind up with a lot and nobody to be interested in it, but I spent 50. I know a lot down the. I know the same dimensions sold down the block. Sold down the block two years ago for nine for ninety. So you know my comp's okay, um, and maybe I do what these people are doing. As I you know put a for sale sign up and see if somebody comes along and will give me sixty five. You know, you know different exits. So that's the part. I, I guess maybe that's part of it too. Is is exits and control. Um, the the private REIT that uh, that I'm going to put, I, I always think of that as the kids' money, you know, the long-term money. Um, I'm going to put some money there because they they buy 1980s big projects, so suburban garden apartment styles, and they rehab all the units and raise the rents. That's the that's the model. They you know they 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 rent it, they renovate tired inventory and take property from C to B. And so, you know, Tucson, thousand dollars a month rent today, fourteen hundred dollars a month rent when they're done, and I don't see anything but a three percent return, maybe, uh, for ten years. Okay, you know, okay, a little bit of money over there, and just you know, let it go. Um, you know, you know, I'm not sure. I, I was I was all hot for. Uh, uh, mobile home parks for a while, and like I said, I got some money in one, and you know those folks were all laid off. You know those folks were all working at Wendy's, and they're not, and they're not working there now. You know they're all restaurant workers or um, hospital uh, entry level people, and there's no need for LVNs and CNAs and that kind of stuff now. You know my my own doctor tried to get me to come in for a, get me to do a tele tele uh, uh, appointment, and I was like, nah, 
you know, and I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor. I, I, the doctor says I should see you once a year. I should believe her. But it was like, I don't want to see you on the computer. Just tell me what blood test you want. <laughs> you know, so. All right, babbling again. Have you ever had a property, like a, a land piece that you cut up and maybe put a step down and sold off parcels? Well, and that's, that's, the, that's the play with the, the, that could be the play with both the Catonement and the, 20, and the 22 acres that we're bidding on, is um, draw the map, draw the map, get it approved, and then sell it in chunks. Um, and so that's the, you know, we'll, We'll know. Um, we'll know. I have not. I have not done that, um, but it seems like a logical thing, you know. And so um, I like the idea of having, you know, two or three builders working in a community at the same time. You get uh, you get stuff happening faster. Um, I looked at, but I looked at a. I walked away from a project in Pensacola that uh, was was exactly that. It was a failed development. They had put the curbs in, and it and it just. It just just didn't happen because the timing was bad, and it was sitting it was sitting dormant for five years. Um, you couldn't you couldn't get construction money on it. You just couldn't borrow money, um, and then suddenly you could, and you know, fifty fifty houses went up overnight with uh, you know like four builders probably. Yeah. So. So on something like that, could you just cut up the lots and sell them individually? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can and you don't you don't have to put in the curbs and the plumbing and you know the, the water and all that. You can you can get the, you can get the water you can get the water to the to the property and then let's say here it's ready to go, Mr. Builder, and then it's a decision of you know how much do you want to how much do you want to carry in paper? How much do you, you know do you want to be in a second position and all that stuff? And you know so if this cantonment lot four and a half acres fifty thousand dollars. Um, if somebody came along and offered me 75 tomorrow, I'd say, yes, sold. Um, but the next thing is, well, now it's, if I cut it into pieces, it's now worth ostensibly 150 instead of 50. And then if I put in a road, well, now it's worth 200 instead of 150. And you just keep moving along. And, and again, we might, you know, we, we, my, my folks there really want to throw up quick, throw up a house because they can put out, they can build a house in, in three months. Um, we're using uh, structural integrated panels now that it comes out and you click it together like Legos. Um, and it's nice, sturdy product. You know, so, so it's, you know, that's using a little bit of this tool and a little bit of that tool and, and then, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's just, I don't, I'm not, I'm never going to be Lennar or Toll, Toll Brothers Homes or any of that. So, so um, Bettina had a question about turning farmland into bedroom communities. And I'll start that with, I don't really mean farmland. <laughs> I don't so do really you think, mean. I have a question on vacant land. And that yeah. was yeah, where vacant I land. was, yeah. it was vacant land because I was uh, reading about people who flip vacant land and, and yeah. I, you know, I was, you know, talking to somebody that said, you know, there's really not a lot of competition and if there's a low barrier to entry and it's, uh, you know, he was saying that it's a lot less grief. I don't know compared to what, but um, I wanted to know what your thoughts are on that. I mean, pros and cons. I mean, what's the good, bad. There are, the there are about? Ton there's tons of competition. Okay. There's tons of competition. Um, it's hard to finance land. Banks won't touch it. Yeah. What about seller financing? I mean, that would be, well, I would think. Now you're, well, and, and I'm, I'm okay playing, I'm okay playing in that because I know how to repossess and foreclose. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, it's, so I've got, so I just, just provided $80,000 in what would be mezzanine financing. So I'm in second and third positions on four lots. The, um, the developer buyer bought a crummy little uh, three quarters of an acre that um, had some really ancient mobile homes. It was the ugliest, it was the ugliest place on the, on, on the very long block. It was just, it was a blighted eyesore. Um, he's been knock he knocks down he so he went to the county got this three quarters acre divided into four lots he then um 
starts a construction project on lot number one, dem demolishes mobile homes number A and B, and he starts construction on number one. As soon as the foundation's ready, he starts construction on number two. And then as those houses are now built and moving into interior, interior uh, uh, builds, now he demolishes numbers three and four, and those tenants move on. Um, and he'll have, he'll have at the end, um, he'll have one property for sale uh, a month, six weeks from now, another one three weeks after that, another one a month after that, another one a month after that. And he just keeps rolling, he'll keep rolling over the sale of property number one and two to fund property number four. My $80,000 second will become a first and then be taken and, and I can move my, I can move my money and I can take some back like, okay, they're going to sell house number one. There's $30,000 in profit. Okay. Do you want to take 15 back now, Steve? Yes. I'll take 15 back now or let it ride at the 8% that it's there until we get to the very end. So I wrote a, I wrote a note for 8%, two points payable in 10 months. You know, just simple, some, you know, some self-directed IRA money, just plugged it there saying, okay, we'll let it do that for two reasons. I wanted to, the money was sitting in the IRA, not doing anything. Um, but I also wanted to ride along on a structural integrated panel construction project. And I'm, you know, I'm, so I'm, I'm doing same. And so far these things go together really quickly. You know, they're built in a factory and assembled on site. I see. Okay. Yep. So, so yeah. And so you can, and this vacant, the, the vacant land I've got, uh, you know, I don't know, like I said, I've been playing, you know, Monopoly or Blackjack with, uh, with um, these uh, tax deeds and foreclosure deeds. And I'm going to wind up with a handful of properties, you know, that, you know, little $5,000, $10,000 lots that I'm going to just turn around and, you know, add 50% or two and put them up on Craigslist. Yeah, yeah because um, when I was chatting with um, this person doing land um, flips, he had mentioned, well, they're land contracts and if you take the property back, you won't have to foreclose because it's not, there's no mortgage, you don't have to go through the courts, it's not a, a, a regular. And so I wanted to ask you about that because if you do seller financing and so forth, and for whatever reason, somebody defaults, how easy is it to take the land? I mean, do you still do a cash for keys and, you know, and then take the land back and resell it? If it's a land contract for these? It, it, um, don't get too into the weeds about um, land contracts versus mortgages. Um, the key in that statement is, is it, um, is it, owner is it owner occupied or is it a construction loan um it just vacant land there's nothing okay. on it right so you're so if you're selling vacant land to someone on terms and mm -hmm. i bought some and i've bought some of these small contracts mm -hmm. you have to make sure that they've stated in the, in the documents that i do not i do not live on this property my permanent mm -hmm. address is one two three main street now mm -hmm. these prepper types are buying acreage and you know, getting a mobile home or getting a tra getting a fifth wheel, driving it out there and moving in, right? But your documents say, hey, you live in the city. Um, does that stand up when they go, when you go to the when you go to the judge and they tell the judge, hey, they didn't give me blah 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 blah. Um, you know, eh. Um, so I'm looking I'm looking at buying commercial buildable property. Um, I looked at financing some large, I looked at a pretty large pool of, uh, of, of notes and matter of fact, uh, shopped it in a discussion with you guys probably a year ago. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I think Jim and I, Jim and I talked about it, you know, about a little bit at 30, at 30, 30 of these, uh, land contracts and the buy price was about 65%. Um, of owing balance and they were performing and I was like, okay, this makes sense. Well, until you get into disposition, you know, you know what are you, what are you going to do with 40 acres in Idaho? Right. <laughs> you know, what, are you going, what are you going to do with 10 acres of New Mexico desert? You know? So there are no, that's not a market. I mean, Oh, there isn't, there's a, very act, there's a very active market. There's a very active market for land. 
but when land isn't when land isn't producing anything land is an expense right i right? understand yeah and yeah. there's no there's no you know and you know you're going to so if i'm going to buy something for 5000 and sell it for 10 i sure like a $5000 down payment sure right and and that's there you know that's there okay. i will tell you for sure for sure the smaller the deal the exponentially higher default rate yes for sure right you know you can sure. you go you can go on ebay and buy $1000 lots you know you can do that all day long Mm -hmm. uh, and people will be happy to give you ninety nine dollars a month, and, 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 and that's and that's yeah. And that's cool. No, I would think well, just like in uh, you know selling notes or or yeah. buying notes, the the, yeah. the lower the the price point, the higher mm -hmm. the probability the borrower won't right. you know come through. So it's a similar um, structure. I just needed to know what your thoughts are um, about that, and you know it's, if there's some. It's a business. It's not investment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so you know, I'm I'm not I'm not taking partners into into deals unless I find you know a forty acre buildable lot near a major access road and it's too good and it's too good to be true. You know, it's it's a half price. It's a half price winner. Mm -hmm. you know, so um, I got to come to a I got to come to a close. It's seven eighteen, and I've got somebody who I promised to be uh, be ready for dinner at seven thirty. So, um, any uh, any quick questions? All right. Um, let me tell you. You can find me at uh, Steve at Modern Asset Management dot com. And I'm happy to get back to you, you know, and, and chit chat. Um, there's, a, for those of you that don't know, there's a YouTube channel under my name, under Steve Hodgdon, H-O-D-G-D-O-N. And all these videos go up there. There's now, now a couple years worth of these ramblings uh, that I've been doing. Um, but uh, there were... Uh, I saw Keith. Uh, when did I see Keith? I saw Keith yesterday. Jim, I haven't talked to you forever. John, glad you stopped in. Nice to meet Bev and uh, and Chi and Crystal. And always good to see Bettina. Uh, so um, with that, I'm uh, I'm gonna go. I got somebody making me dinner, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get going. All right. Um, Thanks, Steve. Thank all right, good. Thank you, uh, Steve. Good you. Okay, you Thanks, guys. Steve. Thanks. All right, all right, so you guys know where to find me, and you know, obviously, I'll talk about this stuff until the cows come home. So, um, anyway, uh, everybody, be safe. Talk to you soon. You too. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.